Good day, folks. Greg Budd from Bud's Baits here. Welcome to the African Lure Craftsman. In the ensuing episodes, we'll be taking you along while we design and handcraft timber lures and hopefully get out into the water to use them. I've designed lures for some of the big boys in the industry and I sell my lures worldwide. I'll do my best to show you some of the hacks I've learned along the way. Stay with us and experience the wonders of casting lures to bass, giant catfish, tigerfish in Zimbabwe, which I'm fortunate to call my home, and cross borders with us as we'll target the denizens of the deep all along the African coast in magical places such as Mozambique. Through it all, I'll share a bit of my daily life and business experience, which can be quite tough in Zimbabwe at times, as we take you along to run the daily gauntlet of survival. Subscribe and click the notifications button to stay with us. Welcome back to the African Lure Craftsman and the second part of our workshop series in my fabulous workshop. What we've got for you today is the rotisserie cabinet that I built to do my lures and do the epoxy coating of my lures. This is a particularly large scale cabinet and uh, there are some lessons I think that can be taken from this, even reducing it down to a smaller scale. So we'll go through the cabinet and as you can see what we've got here is just a standard wardrobe. When I thought about this, I had to do lures in bulk. And what I was uh, wanting to do was build something from scratch. After careful consideration, I thought, why don't I just buy a wardrobe? So I went around the auction floors and I found this baby here, which is a huge capacity wardrobe. And I bought it for about 140 bucks, if I remember. Bit of a ripoff, I know, because it is old, but it's solid wood and it's really, really handy. So what I've done with this cabinet is I've fitted it with, let me open it up and show you. I've fitted it with steel tube, which is running across the cabinet. There's three rows. I could actually put more in if I wanted to, but this at the moment does 46 lures. Um, and these are threaded rods that are running through the steel tube. And as you can see where the masking tape is here, there's different spacings for them. So I can have short spaces between the steel rods. I can have longer spaces for my bigger lures, etc., etc. When it's spaced for the small lures, I can get 46 with the bigger lures a few less. And it's getting to a time when I actually need to probably build another one of these because sometimes this is completely full and just running for days on end. So these rods or these, these steel tubes, they run out the sides of the cabinet and they are fitted to pillow block bearings on the end which means that they always run true. So as you know, with the pillow block bearing, it's kind of on a cam. So the rods, even if they're slightly bent, it's not gonna affect the bearings at all. And they'll always run true. Here's the pillow block bearings, very low maintenance. I mean, they have got little grease nipples on them in case you need to maintain them. But to be honest, I haven't done that once and I've been using this thing for years. There's no squeaks, there's nothing like that. Very solid structure as well. The way we've done it here, you can see it's written. Top side, middle side, bottom side. That's not because I'm silly, that was actually because it fits well, or these particular pillow block bearings fitted well on those, on those uh, tubes, which were marked as well. So I moved to this house recently, or to this premises recently, and when I, had to, when I moved, I had to disassemble this whole thing and then reassemble when I got you. So that's why those were marked. So on this side of the cabinet, we have the engine room, the nuts and the bolts, and this is where everything happens. Very, very simple process. What I've got driving the cabinet is a Series 1 windscreen, Series 1 Land Rover windscreen wiper motor. And that is running onto a set of bicycle bearings and chain, which runs to, these were actually wheels from a trolley, which I just ground out and hollowed in the middle, and then to drive belts up here. You can use any number of electrical engines for this and through your gearing system and your wheels and your pulleys and your various things, you can make it run to the speed you want. The great thing about the Series 1 Land Rover windscreen wiper motor is it's got two speeds. So I can run this very, very fast or reasonably fast and I can run it at a slow speed. I use it mainly on slow, but sometimes when you've got a hot day and the, the epoxy is very, very runny, just speed it up a little bit and it keeps it on there, keeps it on the lures. This motor here is driven through a smart charger and a deep cycle battery. So pretty much if the electricity goes off, which it often does in Zimbabwe, as we've discussed as well, I can still run this for a full 10 hours. I've tested it with that battery. This cabinet will run for 10 hours before it starts really slowing down, which is 
normally will get you through any power cut and um, I haven't been caught short yet. Very simple process. There's the pillow block bearings again. Steel tube to your bicycle chain, your cams and your drive belts up here. Very easy. Now at the moment, I currently have this running off a flick switch, which is housed inside the cabinet on the inner. I did have it outside. Lesson learned, very hard opening the door, getting to the switch all the time. So I moved the switch here and it's got a off position, a slow position and a fast position there. Very easy to use, but it does present some problems as well, which I'll get into just now. But for the time being, I'm using this. Um, when you're on the other side of the cabinet, it can be a little bit difficult to actually get in there and flick it over and paint a lure and then change over again. So as you can see, there's quite a neat little tuck away over here. It's right in the corner. This doesn't get in the way. What I've done is I've put all my electrical points on the side of the cabinet there. They are fitted, very crudely fitted at this stage, but that's fine. That's where they stay. And that makes it very convenient, convenient not only to plug in extras, that which I might want to do, or sanders or various things, but to plug in the lights that are inside the cabinet, because you need a lot of lighting for this. And I've got heaters in the bottom of the cabinet, which I'll show you now. So if I open this door again here, you'll see that there is a shelf. This is how the cabinet came. And when I looked at it, I was going to remove it. And then I thought, no, what better use I, I can get out of it? And that was to place heaters underneath. So in the Underneath here, you'll see there are some heaters. They are hardly ever used, and one thing with a heater, particularly if it's an air heater, is it can raise dust that'll get on the epoxy. But at some stages, when you want to fast cure, when the epoxy is nearly dry, you can just put those on heaters, give them a little bit of a burn, and it does speed up that, um, that drying process. So heaters, lighting, lighting on the inners here, so you can see your bottom baits when you're epoxying them, and uh, yeah, quite a handy little setup. A couple of lessons I've learned and key to running a successful cabinet or rotisserie like this. Locks on the outside. Now, not everyone's like me. I happen to live next to a neighbor who breeds chickens and rabbits, and there's a lot of insect life and flies around. One thing you do need to do, and it's very, very handy having the, the cabinet like this so you can close it, is lock these up. The amount of times I'm extracting insects from wet epoxy is frightening. So those get locked up and you're secure. You only open it when you're checking your lures. Another thing is, uh, I've mentioned the masking tape before. These bits of masking tape are covering the other holes where these threaded rods go. Lesson I learned to my detriment was, cover these things. If you're going to do something like this, cover it with, with masking tape, because what, what was happening is we had done a whole cupboard full of lures, epoxied them, closed the doors, left it, came back 20 minutes later to check on them. And the iron filings inside the steel tube, every time it was going around, was just falling onto all the lures. So I had a whole set of lures covered in iron filings. So little things like that, just handy to know. Lighting, very simple. Fluorescent tubes, I've got connected up here. I think I do need to get more lighting. I'm often hurting my eyes doing this, so I'm going to fit this with more lighting. I've got some more bulbs on the inside here, which operate as well. It does help with the lower lures. And I think what I'm gonna do is put fluorescent tubes on the bottom facing upwards as well. Just so you can see the underside, you can see all sides of the lures all the time. I think on the back of the cabinet and the bottom. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing as well, if we go back to this little switch here, which operates the cabinet, I said before, very hard to actually use if you're that side of the cabinet. So what I've done is I've bought a, sewing machine type foot pedal. I haven't fitted it yet, that's next week's weekend's project. And what we're gonna to have to do with this is probably reverse the polarity because I want the cabinet to be running full time when the pedal is up. When you touch it, it goes off and you can apply your epoxy, you can remove any other material that might have got on the lure. So that's the next step in there. And very easy as well because you can either just move this along the ground or you can fit a rail system which operates the pedal which is fixed down at one corner and it's just operating on a rail which is running the length of the cabinet. 
So quite a, uh, a nifty little um, idea, which was actually not my idea, was the idea of a brilliant person I know who's behind the camera at the moment. Um, and that's our next thing we're going to be doing there. So very simple cabinet, very simple setup, doesn't cost a lot of money. The battery is the most um, uh, expensive thing there and the smart charger. But again, for a couple of hundred dollars or three hundred dollars, you can build a monster cabinet like this. For a smaller cabinet, it's going to obviously be a lot, a lot less. So, how do we attach our lures to the threaded rods? Simple. I've got two sizes of springs here. These are actually made by a company in Harare called Springquip. But all they are is nothing more than electric fence springs. They've just made a different size for me. So that's for bigger or smaller lures to accommodate bigger or smaller lures. Very easy, attach one one end, attach the other, stretch it out between the rods, as you can see here, and very firmly attached, not going anywhere. I mean, it's quite under force that. I've very rarely had accidents, only occasionally, I think one occasion when I've had the spring right on the tip of there and haven't noticed, it's fallen off. Other than that, not a problem at all. And this has done literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lures, this cabinet. So that's the one thing. The other thing, what else do you need with a cabinet like this? Good heat gun, or not even a good one. Cheap heat gun, but a heat gun. So heat gun, what do you use it for? We all know that, just to smooth the epoxy over, get rid of bowls. I do not like to use heat from a heat gun too much, particularly with 3D eyes on wooden lures because it does promote bubbles as well. Heats up the wood, the wood starts exuding oxygen. There are ways to get over that as well. You can preheat your wooden oven, so it does get rid of all the oxygen first, but I don't do that, I haven't always got time. My lures get shaped, they get uh, slotted and cut and assembled and then they go pretty much in straight into paint and the various primers and things like that. So heat gun is a very necessary thing. What I prefer is a lighter. And what I use are these long stemmed lighters for lighting gas ovens and things like that. Reason being, and another lesson learned, is a regular lighter, each time you use it, ejects flint. And I have, or when I used to use regular lighters, you could be doing that with your lure and you now literally throwing flint all over your lure. You'll see little black spots going all over there. So use these lighters. If you're going to use a lighter, a much better uh, bit of equipment to use and doesn't actually put anything onto the lure. I do go through a few of them. Always carry spare gas and I just recharge them. They'll probably only last about five, six refills, then buy another one. Of course, there's simpler ways. I could have a LP gas bottle here with a nozzle and doing it uh, that way, but I prefer these because you can manipulate and use them all over the cabinet, which I find a lot easier. I hope you guys enjoy this setup. Subscribe, hit like, the notifications button, and tune in next time.